before we get going, the race to 10,000 against GM Farming is very, very tight. I think right now I'm only 90 away and he's maybe 130 away. So please go down there and subscribe so we can beat him to 10,000. We can't lose this. So pause the video, go and subscribe. Down there, it's free, costs nothing. I'll give you a second. Right, let's get going. Into the video. Subscribe. Getting all the bits and bobs on that trailer that I'm needing. Needing a crush, needing a quad bike, I'm needing a few gates as well. Need to go and get them. There we go, just like that. Plunk on the back here, strap it all down. Hopefully we'll get a few gates just sitting there as well. Just coming to pick all these gates up, but before we do that, we're gonna see if we can get all these cabs in. So dad's on his way with a bucket of feed. Right, we've got our calves in here. Now we can get those gates and not have to bring them back anytime soon. Gates acquired, coped the troughs over so they don't fill up with water. Get these calves out of here. Right, we're all loaded up. Crush, quad bike, gates and calves. Good to go. I'm just screaming and the fires are howling way down in the valley tonight. There's a man in the shadows. Calves are out in that field now, we're just filling up feeders. and then we'll get the crush and the quad bike and the gates all off. First off the quad bike, then gates, then crush. Right, I'm just grabbing a bag of food, feed them, and hopefully, I'm not gonna shut them in, but I just wanna make sure they're still keen on coming in, no bother. There we go, a bit of grub. Shouldn't be an issue getting them in tomorrow morning. We'll just park the Discovery and the Land Rover along that fence line, draw them up here. Anyway, let's get the crush back in place. Steady does it, steady does it. We'll be bringing these cows and calves in in not too long. It's pretty guttery round about the feeders. The rest of the fields, okay, they've been tracking up and down there, but the rest of the field's actually all right. It's just gonna get worse and worse. So we'll bring them in fairly soon. Just having an afternoon in the rain, clearing up all the rubbish that was about here. Prayer tank's getting shifted, so it's starting to drain out the bottom here. Opened it up. Get this emptied, and then we can shift out the road. The spray tank's gonna shift somewhere else. We've not figured out where yet. There's a bit around that side of the farm, but it's on a slope, so I don't really want to put it there because I want to fill up the sprayer on a slope because the, the readings for the level on it won't be right. There's a water supply right there, so we might just put it on this corner, parked up on the concrete with the sprayer. More rods and ends of pallets and plyboard and shove it in. Got to be ruthless sometimes with these things. Just get rid of it, otherwise it lies in heaps and heaps forever now. Our visitor has arrived. Introduce right, yourself. Welcome back. And that weight up there is about 300 kilos. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. So my YouTube channel is based on the farm at home. We have sheep, which is what I mainly do. But more importantly, we do hay and haylage for the equine world. So any horsey people out there, you know where you can get that from. But yeah, we'll, all I try to do is try and educate people about farming, have some fun on the way, and then meet people like this as well. So that's quite cool. He does, he knows the stuff about sheep. He knows the stuff <laughs> about grass. You can learn a lot. If you're interested, I'll put his link down there. Go and watch some sheep content. You'll get a lot more sheep content than you will here on the farm. <laughs> Cheers mate, thank you. Do you like my sheep? Oh, I love them. Love them. On a perfectly <laughs> Scottish day, miserable and wet. He's yes. come He's come specially to see me and not come to see Cammy the sheep game. No, no, no. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? We've got him doing some jobs. Just tip it down there. Happy days, I'm taking it easy now. Thankfully he knows what he's doing with this. Will's having a browse because he's got a missus to please. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait. What's her name again? Sophie. Sophie, you're welcome. <laughs> he's collected some goodies and he's off again. Where are you going next? I'm off to Kilmarnock, so Cammy's. <laughs> Sheep game Cammy. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's the better farmer? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right, Will, there's yep. a question I ask quite a few people. <laughs> Grey Fergie or the new Fent? Oh. I'd rather say Fergie because Fergie. we're with John Deere man at home anyway, so I'll go for the grey Fergie. <laughs> We've got the wrong green apparently. <laughs> In true sheep farmer style, he's got an absolute belter of a ding on his, <laughs> on his, on his pickup. <laughs> Look at that. How did you manage that? Um, backed into a girder. Backed into a girder. So not even in a field, it was not in the yard. It. I was just rushing. <laughs> We've all backed into something. Yeah. Thankfully, most of my mi mishaps 
were before I started YouTube. So you're not seeing too many of them. Oh yeah, that, that's the thing. Everything's on camera, isn't it? Everyone knows everything. Everyone knows <laughs> everything, especially the boss. Right. Cool. Cheers, Will. Cheers yeah, for visiting. thank you. Really appreciate it. It's been cool to stop by and I'm sure I'll pop by soon because we've got to see that again when it's in full. Yeah, yeah. We'll go for a pint. We'll go. Yeah, Will's definitely. a big cricket man. Yeah. He was top scorer in his, in his league this year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll go maybe watch a game of cricket, drink a few beers. Definitely. And the rugby. Thank you. Happy days. Free Tammy from Cow the Hill. Well, cheers, cheers, Will. But yeah, if you're not already, go and subscribe to him. Real nice guy. Good morning. I wait to try and round up some cows and calves. Got to inject them for pneumonia. Not the cows, the calves only. Go on in. Seven off the cows now. We've got them all in, no bother. We want to keep all the calves. And that cow over there has got a bad foot, so we want to have a look at her. Right. Calves are all sieved off. Injection gun. Same medicine as the last time Bovi passed, 5ml dose. So the chambers there set to 5ml, which you adjust with this. Medicine goes on there, with the collar on if I remember. Collar goes on there, medicine gets pushed on there, tighten that up, and you give it a pull and it'll fill with medicine. Needle on the end. Head yoke set to the right width, which is just what we are these, unlock these. Slide this piece in and out. It's also got screws down here that hold it. Can't film with a GoPro today, it's Gustavo. We've got one issue with the crush. There's something that's sheared, I've just found it. It needs welded, but it basically means when the calves come firing into the headstock, when they come in with loads of pace, they get out. Just been down the field getting the number of the calves that just escaped last. The wind was really bad, so you can't hear anything I said in this clip. But this big flap is responsible for letting the headstock open fully, i.e. letting the calf all the way out. When it's up, the calf can get right the way out, and when it's down in position, the calf gets locked in position so I can inject it. And this main flap is sheared from the spring-loaded mechanism it's meant to be on, so it's only seating in position with gravity and not the spring mechanism. So when the calves come in really quick and fast, that plate jumps up, and the gates can open fully when I don't want them to. So I need to do a bit of welding here. Ted's been giving his tractor a wash so it's looking nice and shiny again. Looks nice. Anyway, while the washer's out, I'll give that a blast because covering gutters when it was in the field where the cattle were. Look at that, now we're talking. Big turkey at the back there. This is a Christmas kit. Fergus, this is my brother by the way, kind of runs the shop. Hello. Um, he's making up a hamper here to get pictures and whatnot for the Christmas hamper that we do in Christmas orders. So I think this is like the belt of a pack. Everything's in here. There's loads of different pack sizes for two, four, six, ten people, whatever. It'll be available on the website, will it? It'll be on the website and uh, the 10th of October. Globeburn Farm Shop. Yeah, 10th of October. Have a look. Yeah, all the Christmas gear. If, if you're interested in looking for that kind of thing for your Christmas orders, have a look on the website. Anything beef wise, that's our own stock going through there for Christmas. Turkeys are just outside Bankery, I think, which is about an hour and a half north, two hours north of here. Or your parsnips, carrots, potatoes, they're all grown by my uncle in Fife. Sprouts are sourced just a wee bit beyond Dundee. Anything cake wise that's in the order, that's all made in the farm shop using eggs from our free range hens. Most of what's in all the packs is either grown on the farm here or sourced in Scotland. It's all Scottish gear, best of gear. Okay, next, the sprayer tank. Let's see if we can shift it. There we go, we're on the move. So far, so good. Just doing a 180, because we want the outlet here, and we want the inlet, which is on the other side. It, basically, I need to, to reposition. Okay, let's just jump in so I can video a wee bit of it. That's us, in position. It sits fractionally this way. It's not too bad, because any any sediment or whatnot that settles in it will settle on one side and we're drawing out the other side. All right, we've just plumbed up. We've put in a tap. Predictions, how much of it will leak? Oh, there's one already. I think that top one's leaking. Two, three. Tap doesn't leak. I'm away to get some new fittings because we're just scraping a barrel full of old fittings and the old fittings have come off for a reason. Got some bits, this is what I'm needing. Attempt two. fancy quick connector thing. They didn't have the normal ones. All good. 
big piece of kitten for a service today. The more. Yeah, it's just 50 hour service, so. Got it jacked up. There's actually, there's a few grease nipples on it. I still have to go around all them. Um, but most of the joints actually just get a bit of PTFE grease. You know the white tape you get? It's the same chemical, PTFE, which is poly tetrafetylene. <laughs> I have no idea. I Google it, polytetrafluorethylene. Fluorethylene. I'll crank this up. This is a brilliant wee jack, I love it. So it's a low profile trolley jack. It's, it's only rated for two tons, so it's not much use for a lot of farm kit, but the likes of this, or it'll do cars, whatever, but really low profile, only sticks up the ground that far. Right, PTFE'd any joints that are needing that. This is the shaft to the drive on, on the blades here. So if I turn the blades, you'll see that rotate. Oh, it's not a 15. 14, Japanese. Oh, Jesus, it's tight. Can I do it without getting myself covered in oil? Probably not. Oh, tiny wee dribble on my thumb. Anyway, there goes the oil. Lovely laminar flow. Laminar flow, i.e. it doesn't look like it's flowing. Looks like a solid piece. There should be 3.1 litres in here. Right, we'll let that dribble away. Bung back on. Click. 50 newton metres. Now I've got this plate off. Oil filters in here. I can't get it by hand, so I've got a wee strap on it. Just being careful, there's a wee spline off of the wiring harness in there so I've disconnected it and trying not to break it when I do this. Filters off, we've got a pool of oil now. It's meant to be hand tight plus a half turn so so very hand tight. Whoa 1.2 ton this thing weighs. I can't believe that. Like syrup. There goes some lovely fresh new oil. Engine oil side of things all done in terms of, well, oil and the filter, that's it. Two fuel filters to do and the gearbox oil. Gearbox oil change at 50 hours, that's what we're at. And that wee thing means the jobs indicated by that wee thing must be done initially, okay? And then also in the same column, you've got an asterisk and a one the initial 50 hours should not be a replacement cycle. I'm confused. And the same with the engine oil. So I didn't know what to make of that, whether I was meant to change it or not meant to change it, but no harm in changing it. Rye, it's too windy out there to film, but I went out to have a wee look, to see if it's come through. There's a few bits that are two, three mils through the ground. So it's just about there. Never grown rye before, but it's coming through the ground. So that's a good sign. All the crops before they are through the ground, they don't really have any green color to them. When it's under the soil, it's not able to collect sunlight, so it doesn't need to be green, because the green is chlorophyll pigment, which utilizes the sun's energy to transfer it into energy for growth. So when it's below the surface of the soil, it doesn't need that pigment because there's no sunlight. As soon as it gets through, that chlorophyll fills out, the green pigment starts to build, and then you get a really nice green color. Whereas before it comes through, it's pretty much white. Anyway, I'm still looking for this dog. That's why I was out near the rye, because often she's found out there. She's appeared. Come on, up, in you get. Gate lady's doing the fine bits in here, drawing around all the tools. Me, a big clobber-fisted monkey, can't do that. Now there'll be no tools missing at all, apart from a spanner in there, 24 mil. Two spanners there, two spanners there. I have no idea where I've got them. You flee about at harvest and sowing and tools get abandoned everywhere. Cheers for watching. I'm off for the weekend, so there might not be a Monday video. So see you next video. Hey, Doug. Oh. On tour today, feeding other cows. Gate lady's still being gate lady. Can anyone figure out from the view where we're on tour?